Hey, how are you? This is Show Dad here with another uh, video. Uh, it's gonna be a gear review of uh, two packs. My Osprey, which is a 72 liter. My uh, partner's uh, mountain equipment co-op pack, which is 75 liters. We're gonna be going over some gear and uh, that we've been using this summer, uh, during late summer and uh, late uh, fall, we get into uh, doing the Bruce Trail. For my American viewers, the Bruce Trail is comparable to your PCT, Pacific Crest Trail, Colorado Trail, and Appalachian Trail. The Bruce Trail in Ontario, Canada, goes from Niagara Falls to Topomori. Uh, the people that already have been doing the Bruce and have done it before or want to get into it, you already are familiar with it, but this is going to be more of a gear review. So I have seen a lot of people ask questions on some of the Bruce Trail sites about tracking poles, boots, packs. So I want to go over some of the gear that we've been using. Um, again, this, uh, the trail is a uh, uh, work in progress. We started it with our daughters, that two of our daughters. And uh, we have been doing it twice because me and my partner have been doing it. But then when we go with my daughters, we're doing it a second time. So we have roughly 70 to 100 kilometers. And on the trail, next year we're going to get more serious into it because it's kind of late into the season already. And with our work schedules and my daughter's schedules, that we have to kind of balance it out. But so we have been doing a lot of camping this year, um, hiking, local trail hiking, uh, kayaking. So this gear has been tested. It's been used all summer and we can take and see what's in it. So anyone who is into backwoods camping, car camping, hiking, um, snowshoeing, winter camping, there's a lot of gear in here. Those who are into sur uh, survivalist bushcraft, Bug up bags, again, there's a lot of useful uh, gear and information in here. So be sure to watch. I hope you enjoy. Uh, leave comments and tell us what you think. But we'll get uh, into these bags and... Okay, my first item I'm gonna be talking about is boots. My partner has a pair of Solomon's, I do too. We did switch out the laces. We use 550 Paracord. I find that they all last longer, they don't stretch as bad, and where I cut them longer, we can wrap them around our boot, and it gives me a lot more support in the back of the heel. Solomon, I find, are comfortable on the feet. It gives me good arch support. They're waterproof. The warranty is good. I want a boot that I know I can take out to the woods uh, or on the trail, and if something happens to it within, you know, couple months I can take it back and I can get a new pair no, nothing is worse than having a pair of boots and they break down after you pay a few hundred dollars for them and you can't do nothing about it Solomon stands behind their quality and a warranty and this is the fourth pair I've had and every time something happens before the warranty's up take them back get another pair uh, they're really good about it um, like I said, uh, we, we can do all day hikes with these with full packs on and a good pair of hiking boots for anyone getting into hiking, uh, even just wearing around daily. I, I wear these every day. They're good because you can carry the pack on your back without having any pain to your legs, fatigue. Um, you don't feel tired. You don't feel sluggish after you stop for the day. You take them off and your feet feel good after. They don't feel like they're... Um, sore or tired so I do recommend Solomon's but you don't have to buy them I'm just suggesting that if you get into hiking get a good pair of boots get a good pair of hiking boots and uh, research and th that way you enjoy hiking okay the second piece of gear I do advise people to get in is maps of the area that you're hiking this is the uh, Bruce Trail reference maps and trail guide. It has the history of the Bruce Trail. It has trail etiquette. It has a list of gear you should carry. 
it has um, stops like uh, overnight stops it gives you the uh, information on the badges or um, different parts of the trail sections of it it's uh, very nicely tabbed out uh, plant and wildlife references I do not take this on the uh, trail with me though when I do go on the Bruce I don't want to uh, damage the pages so what I'll do I'll photocopy the uh, maps and we will paste them together and put them in a Ziploc bag and have a bigger map but we won't take the actual book out on the trail we'll have um, the information that we need out of the book photocopied in with us because the, the book's too nice to uh, damage and get dirty or ruin but any hiker uh, whether it's on a trail like the PCT or the Bruce Trail or even some of your local trails do carry uh, maps and research where you're going the money out of the uh, Bruce Trail um, it goes back into it, to the volunteers, supplies, uh, land uh, allowances or privileges. So, thank you very much, and yeah, it's always good to have a good reference guide. Okay, my third piece of gear are track and poles. These are black diamonds. You don't have to go with black diamonds. That these are roughly a hundred dollars a set you can get more expensive or you can go cheaper but the functionality of these on the trail are lifesaver a lot of, some people say oh you don't need them okay you might not but i found with uh, the fall the leaves are wet some of the days we went on we had rain and it's very slick across the uh, rocks going up and down steep slopes and these here acted as three points of contact so you always had good uh, traction and the extra support and if you're carrying a pack you don't want to feel off balance and that sort of thing it's also uh, putting a strain on your knees and that because if you don't have these you're using your whole body and your knees and legs to uh, prevent you from slipping and falling and keep your balance. These here, I found, took a lot of the pressure off that because it gave you more stability. And so it was easier on your knees and back. So the track and poles are a wonderful and good idea. Um, anyone doing ultra light camping, if you're using a tarp, on the Bruce Trail, you come across the camping area you can use these as your pole to set up your uh, tarp or tent. So it's not just a walking stick. You can use these for shelter making um, coyotes. You can use these as a way for uh, self-defense. So it serves more than one purpose. So yes, I do recommend a set of tracking poles for the cost of them and the weight of them it's not going to break the bank and it's not really an inconvenience because it doesn't add a lot of weight to your pack so why not i see more pros uh, with them than cons okay the fourth piece of gear are these camel backs they are two liter bladders which we put in our backpacks the hoses Quickly connect and disconnect. For cleaning, you can get the insulated tubes for winter time. That way, they don't freeze up. Very durable plastic, and they go inside our Osprey and uh, Mech mounting equipment co-op uh, backpacks. These are great for. Uh, Hiking uh, day bags, uh, you put them in your hiking bags, but you have to have a water supply. We went with these uh, because instead of carrying the bottle, these are hands free, and we haven't had to use uh, or come across the lake or river to 
refill all these. If we had to, we would have to put uh, water, water purification tablets in because the water would have been questionable. But for the hikes we've been on, we've been carrying these. We do have another bottle with us already full of water. So we've been carrying roughly three liters of water per hike. And uh, it's been doing us quite well. But have a uh, water source or these come a box. You can get platypus. Uh, Osprey has some bladders. But do carry a uh, water bladder or a good sized bottle. And make sure you're hydrated on the uh, trails. Okay, the next piece of gear is my partner's uh, mountain equipment co-op backpack. It's 75 liters. The waist straps have no nice, nice uh, pouches on it for easy access, you know, quick items that you have to get. There's nice breathable mesh front. It unzips here so you can flip the whole uh, pack open so you can access what's inside the center and bottom half of it. The straps and uh, back are very easy to adjust. You can slide this up on down on the back of the uh, pack. You can adjust it so you can carry it higher or lower. Same as your chest strap. You can just that up and down it's breathable uh, carries nice it has your top pouch here at the very top and then when you want to clip it it has another pouch here across the inside and then it has your main section I will uh, stop the video and I'll start taking stuff out of here, line it up. That way it'll be easier for videotaping. Okay, and the top of the mountain equipment pack, partner had the headlamp in the top. It's just a energizer one, but it does all the same things as some of the more expensive ones. It has your high beam, and low beam functions. It does move on the elastic headband. And it runs off three AAA batteries. I could have got a uh, rechargeable one, but the thing is I use rechargeable batteries, so I'm not using disposables. So again, my waste and impact on the environment is very low. And that's what these bags are. Uh, kind of built around it's no batteries or if they are they're all rechargeable that way it can be served over and over again with very little um, impact to the environment um, snacks we always have a uh, beef jerky in our uh, backpacks last four days uh, lightweight good energy good protein Easy to eat on the trail, along with a couple of cliff bars. Uh, we'll throw some trail mix in as well. Here's her Gerber uh, suspension multi tool. We don't need a big, bulky knife. Uh, this here, for what we use it for, this is all we need. In my pack, I do have uh, two knives, which I'll go over, but for her, she needs one knife. We have an emergency blanket, just in case. Hopefully we never have to use it. A compass, even though the trail is um, easy to read, if we're bushwhacking and doing some uh, backcountry camping, always have a compass, have your maps, good for direction. Even on the Bruce Trail, if we uh, do get lost somehow, with our maps and compass, we can uh, navigate our way out. In her top pouch, we have a first aid kit. We did not buy one. We bought the uh, supplies uh, separately. That way we can customize it to what we need and 
um, it's actually a lot better than one that we can actually buy. So this is in the top section of her pouch. Okay, the main compartment of my partner's uh, bag here. She has a brand new C2 Summit mattress. The uh, bag that the store is in, it's like an air bladder. So you can attach it to the mattress, allow air to go into it, roll it up, and then push the air into the mattress and inflate it that way. You don't have to uh, blow into it, uh, so it saves you from losing your breath. But this mattress is about one pound. I wouldn't say any more than that. It's very light. Um, it's a different material. It's um, more of a nylon plasticky material. I use the X Speed. This is totally different from my Xpeed, which I got five years ago. Um, really impressed with this. I will do a separate video on this C to Summit mattress. Uh, it has a good R value as well. So anyone who's been hiking the Bruce or looking at hiking the Bruce or any trail, if you're looking for a good backpack um, sleeping mattress or a pad, I do recommend this one. As well, in the bag, we have some bug repellent. This Berkey water bottle. Up here, we have uh, Life Straw water bottles, um, MSR. Berkey I get from the States. I've seen this when I get into a backpacking and um, survival or bushcraft probably 10 years ago. And great it's a soft water bottle so it won't smash break dent uh it has a filter in it it gets rid of uh any impurities in the water um heavy metals chemicals they'll get rid of those it won't get rid of viruses inside of it you have water purification tablets but i carry that along with the camelback also in her bag she has a musket Fork, knife, spoon, plastic, uh, cup, bowl, and plate. It's lightweight. It's nothing fancy. So it'll get her by or get us by if we're preparing meals. So you don't have to go expensive. It's just something to eat off of. I gave her a pack of cards to go in her bag in case we stop. I'm going to play card games or whatever. Yeah, Past time. And it's just a tradition for me. I just carry them. We have 50 feet of rope in her bag. Orange. And that way you can see it if you have to use it as a uh, guide. Um, it's 550 paracord. You can use it if you're shelter making. Um, tying things up. If you're camping, you can hoist your backpack up off the ground get your food up off the ground or into a tree if you're in bear country so i always carry rope on me again anyone doing their own hiking or uh, trails the trail etiquette is different this is what i carry i'm not saying you have to again this is just um gear that we carry but this is what is in my partner's uh, backpack we do have to get her a half decent sleeping bag I've been letting her use mine I have it rolled up right now it's a half of a US military sleep system so it is quite heavy it's not ultra light but I let her carry that in her bag that way it fills it out and rounds it out that way it, the bag isn't just a you know collapsed bag that so working on her bag but so far, I showed you what's in the top pouch and some of the gear that we're working on. Like I said, it's a work in progress. Not when you buy quality, it does cost a little bit, but it also lasts. So, you know, we're slowly working into it. But again, she got her bag this year. 
get a nice mattress, pot, boots, rope, uh, camel back, hiking poles. So we're getting it. We're, we're buying it as we go. Okay, here is my bag. I carry a 70 liter Osprey. I was fortunate enough to find this one was getting rid of it. $50. Um, he only used it twice. And so for 50 bucks, it's a $400 bag at least. Um, I've used this for the last nine years, nine, 10 years. And it's absolutely a pleasure to carry. So Osprey, again, they have a lifetime warranty. Um, great quality, world renowned. Um, it holds a ton of gear, but it doesn't feel like it. What I have in here weighs around 40 pounds. Uh, breathable. Back to it, fully adjustable. Has the aluminum frame built into it. A great waist strap around it, padded, again adjustable. The uh, straps themselves are all adjustable. The hydration tubes come on either side of the pack, but when the hydration pack is inside, it comes up through a uh, side corner. My top flap turns into a day pack. I can take this right off. Gives me a pouch here, pouch here. I have my compass tied to my zipper. I always carry a compass, as you've seen with uh, my wife's pack or uh, partner's pack. It's there in the pouch. I get a zippered side pouch. I have an elastic side pouch on this side with a, another Berkey bottle. I won't go over the Berkey bottle again as you already seen it in the uh, mech bag which my uh, partner carries. I have carabiners up to the outside. I have a front pouch where you slide in whatever you want but I get my tent stakes and my tent poles on the inside. Those uh, poles are on another video. They uh, go with actually two videos actually when I see it at Valens campsite and uh, out in the backyard. Those uh, poles and stakes go to my Eureka Spitfire Duo tent. It's a two person tent. I went with a two person one because between the one person and two person it was less than half a pound difference in weight to carry. The tent itself is only two and a half pounds. So I went with the bigger one. That way it gives me more space on the inside. And I would rather carry a half pound and sacrifice a half pound and another piece of gear just so I can have a bigger um, area to sleep in. It has the bottom pouch to access my gear there. Here is a zipper that opens up the side so it can access my inner gear, but it has all kinds of tie-offs and everything else. Anyway, I will get to the inside of the bag and I'll show you what I carry when I'm on the trail. So for those of you which I'm gonna address, like those on the Bruce Trail, you don't have to carry all of this. This is just some ideas. I've been doing a lot of outdoor hiking and camping, that sort of stuff, for years. So I just threw, I didn't throw, but I put stuff in my bag that way I have it. Or if I want to do some bushcraft survival or backwoods camping, I have it. So I keep a lot of this stuff in my bag anyhow. So it's not just a bush trail bag, it's... Um, all around purpose bag. Uh, these are gum containers and what I've been doing I've been saving them and I, I've been putting 
a pre-made uh, trail mix in there. So I'll make my own trail mix up with M&Ms, walnuts, uh, sunflower seeds, almonds, pumpkin seeds, and I'll take the leftover gum containers and I'll put a little trail mix in there. That way I have it. They're great. Again, beef jerky, steak bites. One of my favorite meals on the uh, trail. Easy. If I'm doing an overnighter, I'll throw in a mountain house. Um, it's a moat meal. But for the trail, I, I just been carrying that. 50 feet of uh, paracord again. 550 paracord. A little personals bag. So overnighters. I hate uh, waking up in the morning. Nah, uh, you know. Breath smelling gross. Toothbrush, travel, toothpaste. Easy to carry. And it, it's nice to have. P water, uh, water purification tablets. I get a bunch of those. Always carry them. Always good to have. Insect repellent. Let's go. Foot care. Where we've been doing the Bruce Trail, we have been hiking many kilometers and we're averaging 15 to 20 kilometers a hike. And so, you know, your feet get the odd blister here or there. And in case you need it, it's there. We haven't had to use them. Uh, we haven't had no blisters on our feet from the boots we've been wearing, but you never know. So, good to have. Ticks, even though um, in Canada we have four seasons. Ticks are out late in the season. When it's very cold, minus 10, 20, the ticks tend to hibernate. But people have been finding ticks all the way up through until November and December and out in uh, February if we have a warm spell or March. This is uh, from Magnata Wines, the founder of Magnata Wine. He actually passed away from uh, complications due to Lyme disease. He was a uh, big uh, supporter into uh, Lyme disease um, studies and prevention. And so at the uh, Magnata Wine Store, they sell tick removal kits. And I've seen these, I heard about these. And so I went and got a couple to have. So, great idea. Another first aid thing. I carry it just because uh, a lot of people look past it, but really good idea, especially on the Bruce Trail. My headlamp. It's a black diamond headlamp. I like it because when I turn it on, it has a high beam. I can switch it to my low beam. I can switch it to my red light. But whatever setting I set it on, when I hit the power button, it will save it to that setting. And when I turn the power back on, it'll be already automatically set. So if I have it set to the high beam, I hit my main power button, it's high beam. If I set it to my red light and hit the main power button, to shut it off when I go to turn it back on again it's set to the red light it takes AAA batteries again I use my rechargeable ones that way it cuts back on the waste these uh, black diamond headlamps are uh, submersible you can put them in the water you can get them wet and they will be perfectly fine great piece of gear like it bright uh, also, it's 130 lumens, so it gives off a good beam of light. My uh, MSR Titanium Fork Knife Spoon Set. My fire kit is the same one as you've seen in the mech bag, so I'm not going to go through it. The differences are, I get some fat wood in there, so it's good for... Uh, making a fire, another fire starting uh, trick. Uh, but fat wood is 
in my bag. So I, I can take that out and leave it. Right. right in the rain book. I like taking down notes and I'm on the trail. If I notice something on the trail that needs repair, I can write down the location of it, group and say, you know, this section of the trail needs this, or I notice this, or if I get lost, I can write down locations in here, um, or if I see uh, wildlife, or if I notice anything in the out of the ordinary, I can just write it in here. It's where I can just write a journal. So, but I write in the rain book is great. I can get this wet. I can drop it in a mud puddle, and it will uh, so allow me to write on the pages without them tearing. And uh, great, inexpensive little uh, idea. Flag and tape. Get lost. You can mark your location. Or if you uh, want to mark your location for other reasons, to know where you were, or if you notice something on the trail that needs attention to, or if you want to stop from people from going there because, you know, danger on the trail, tree down or a widowmaker across the top of it, mark it off, and uh, it's good uh, attention. It grabs people's attention. I get a Mora, which is a very simple basic knife, short little blade, but for shelter making, if I'm backwoods camping, I don't really need it on the bruise. I get a multi-tool anyhow, but I, me, I always carry two knives as well as a sharpening stone. Doll knife doesn't do you much good, so you always need a way to sharpen your knives. So we have a sharpening stone with us. Okay, the uh, inside of my bag, this is what I carry. I have my dry bag here. I have three pairs of wool socks, some base layers, and a long sleeve shirt. So it's everything that will keep me warm. My pants and that go on the outside. I can dry those up, but if I keep my, if I get wet, I want to keep my feet dry. I get long johns in there to keep my core dry and warm and uh, long sleeve sh uh, shirt so I can take off what I get on, dry them out next to a fire or where I'm at for the night. But as long as I get my base layers, everything else will be fine. I get Matt and Host meals to go with my beef jerky and granola or a trail mix. I have a MSR stainless steel pot. I can uh, purify water instead of using my water purification tablets or my filters. Or I can boil the water for my Matin House meals, which I've been doing most of. I have a stainless steel pot here. Very little use because I can boil my water in that pot, but prep a meal isn't it? Great eating meals or soup soda, good. My plate, my stainless steel cup, all of which you can, if you had to, you could cook over the fire to uh, purify or make meals. This is why I want stainless steel. This is pretty obvious. It's a first aid kit. Again, I customized it. I did not buy it. I found the bag, uh, which was a old first aid bag. Everything inside of it was uh, no longer usable. Cleaned up the bag, and so I customized it. Again, there's more stuff in here than we can get at a, uh, in a pre-bought one. My Yuko matches. These are the ones you've seen in my partner's uh, fireproof kit. They were in the Ziploc. These matches are windproof waterproof they will not go out in a strong wind but they are one heck of a match so if you're trying to get a fire going i do recommend these these here you can get at sale i know zippo makes their version of it but those are one wicked match again when i'm at camp and we're 
the Bruce Trail is a lot of private land. My bag is built around um, reusable things. I don't want to take in a lot of litter or leave anything. So instead of having batteries or any fuel canisters left there, I get a little candle lantern to give me a little bit of light inside my tent. It gets the moisture out of it. It gives me a little bit of light. So between my headlamp and this, of course, uh, cell phones come uh, with a light on them. But uh, th there's enough reusable light that I don't have to take in any waste with me. And th this is simple enough. That's all I need. I have my Leatherman. That is my second knife to go along with my Mora. So, again, multi-tool has all the functions on it. Easy to use. Dog spray, in case you come across any coyotes or wildlife that might seem aggressive. This is a great uh, tool to have. So if you're doing the Bruce or hiking in general, I always carry uh, pepper spray or dog spray on me. It's a good backup. If you're in bear country, maybe some bear spray, that would be a very handy, useful thing. Again, it's just a deterrent. Uh, lightweight, handy to have though, in case you need it. Hopefully you never do, but just in case. On the Bruce Trail, it's very clear in the um, book, and even online if you follow it. I don't know about the PCT or Appalachian Trail or Colorado Trail, but the Bruce Trail is very clear and it gives you a very strict rules to follow. No open fires. If you come to a spot to camp at night and stay, fine. A conservation area, fine. But other than that, they make it very clear that only a stove. So I have my MSR International stove. This thing is a variable, adjustable um, flame on it. it. Heats up very fast. I do have to carry a canister with it. Um, stoves where you screw on top of a pressurized canister. I carry this because those canisters, uh, even though they're efficient in cold weather, you have to turn them upside down to get them to work better. Also, when they're empty, they're uh, waste. They take up landfill. This here, I can pressurize this, and it will work in any cold temperature I've been in. And uh, I don't have to worry about it um, not working as the temperature gets colder and colder. I can just adjust the pressure by pressurizing the canister, and away you go. Also, I can carry, you know, a lot more fuel in one bottle, and I can get two to three days use out of it. So, I, I see better benefits rather than going with the jet boil or a little rocket stove because these are uh, multi-use. Uh, this is a multi-fuel stove. Um, heats up fast. I can fit a bigger pot on it and adjustable legs. Like I can level out the legs better on it. It comes with a nice little repair kit on the inside of it. A fire reflector so I can wrap it around and it has the manual in there. So this is very easy uh, to maintain and keep maintenance up on. And uh, MSR is a great name. So I highly recommend this stove. Again, this is proper trail etiquette. If I'm backwoods camping, where you, you know, can have open fire, I can get rid of this. I can save a few pounds in my backpack if I had to. But I don't mind carrying it. Again, I don't have a whole lot of weight. This is my Xpeed mattress. This is extra large because I'm six foot two and I like to sleep on my side. It is uh, three inches of loft off the ground. It has an air value of five. 
This is a little bit heavier than the C to Summit one that my partner has. This is probably a pound and a half, but it has um, good baffles and it gets me off the ground. I find this here very comfortable. When I roll over at night, I don't go off the mat. I stay on it. My sleeping bag is in my partner's mech bag just over there by the rocking chair. Like you said, it just fills out her bag. We are looking at getting her her own sleep system. But with my backpack, the gear I have in it, and that sleeping bag, I'm around 38 to 41 pounds. That's not bad, and I can do 20 kilometers quite easily with that on my back. The tent I use is my Eureka Spitfire Duo. Um, this tent you can no longer get. I did a review on it. It doesn't make much sense to try to find one, but they do make similar tents. If you look at my other videos, you will see the review I done on this. Also my Val uh, Valens campsite. I done, I took this with me, but this tent, when I, I can compress it even smaller, the tent along with the poles and stakes are two and a half pounds and it's a two person tent. So I'm not gonna look for another tent until this one here is shot. I don't use a hammock, I do sleep on the ground because I can move around and do stuff inside the tent. In a hammock, I feel like a taco and, you know, more exposed to the elements. Also, uh, as far as uh, ticks and that go too. So in my tent, I'm away from all bugs and mosquitoes and I, I can sit there, I can read a book, I can uh, play cards, lay everything out on the bottom of the tent floor. Again, this is my preference. And with my mattress and sleeping bag, I'm carrying the same weight as anyone carrying a hammock, an under pad, and a sleeping bag anyhow. So this is my sleep setup. So inside my main uh, pack, this is what I carry. I can add certain types of food in here, like uh, everything's very versatile. With the winter coming on, if I want to make it into a winter camping bag, that will have to be another video. But right now, this is what I carry on the Bruce. And my partner right now carry on the Bruce in our bags. I hope everyone enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed some of the gear you've seen. If you have any questions, look at my videos. A lot of it is already uh, put, to, uh, uh, put to test on some of my reviews. And uh, it's good to see what other people carry. That way when you go to the store, you don't feel overwhelmed and feel like just buying whatever you, know, you see. This has all been tested and proven in my use and has worked very well. No complaints. Again, Osprey pack, mech pack. Um, I do recommend the track and poles. Invest in a good pair of boots. But any questions, leave them in the thread. But be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Keep on watching for, for videos. Follow us on the Bruce Trail. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.